Shalom, Kal Halal, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatam to you brothers and sisters with good works, be encouraged, continue the faith. Today's lesson is going to be structured around Galatians 6 and 3. All right, and why I say that? Because we have become teachers to our people, all right? Whether it be to prophesying, to sit down, or whatever talents we use or we utilize to edify our people, we're teaching them, all right? But because we're in that position, right? Don't need to get prideful about it. Don't need to be proud about it, right? Don't need to start the ego tripping about it. Because at the end of the day, the most I could use you to teach your people, to edify our people, and then at the end, he'll kick you to the curb. You understand? So it's better to be humble, right? Better to exercise that humility. And I'm gonna read the scripture, Galatians 6 and 3. It says, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Exactly. If you think yourself to be something that you're not, you're deceiving yourself, right? You are lying to yourself. Don't be that person. Don't be that person because again, the Most High would use anything or anyone he wants, right, to bring this word out or to edify his people or to teach his people and at the end, he'll get rid of them. And I got to prove that point, right? And to prove that point, let's go to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Leviticus 11. Leviticus 11 and and uh, and 13, right? And these are they which he shall have in abomination among the fowls, and they shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, right? They said they are an abomination. When you look up the word abomination right there, it means a detestable thing, right? A detestable thing, all right? An unclean thing. You see that? But when you scroll down to where it says, Jesenius Hebrew Chaldee Lexicon, right? The word abomination is something abominable used of unclean person or thing. So it also refers to an unclean person or thing. You see that? An unclean person or thing. So let's read that again. It says the eagle and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, Right? It says every raven after his kind. And I'm making a point right here, right? Bear with me. I'm making a point right here. So the raven is considered an unclean thing, a detestable thing, an abomination. Right? That is the raven. Alright? Now let's get 1 Kings 17. 1 King 17. So remember, the raven is an unclean, detestable, abominable thing, right? But the word abominable, it also goes to people, all right? First uh, Kings 17 and 1, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord power of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Kerith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now think about this for a minute. We just read in Leviticus 11.13, the raven is an abominable, detestable, unclean thing. 
but the most I use this abominable, detestable, unclean thing to feed his servant Elijah. Right? To feed his servant Elijah. Let's read on. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt in the brook Kerith, that is before Jordan, verse 6. And the ravens bought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So you see that? So the Mosai used this unclean vessel, right? This detestable vessel, and bought food. For his servant right or use this unclean vessel to feed his servant right to feed his servant now remember abominable is also a person right a person now let's get luke abominable can also refer i mean could also refer to a person all right, let's get Luke 16. Luke 16, and let's start at 14, so we could see who Yahawashai is talking to here, right? So Luke 16 and 14, and again, the point I'm making is the Mosai used the raven and a clean vessel, right, to feed his servant Elijah right of course the most I could use anything he want to feed his servant All right Luke 16 and 14 and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derived him so now we know right now Yahweh is dealing with the Pharisees right here right they derived Yahweh Pharisees right let's read on verse 50 and he said unto them ye right the ye is talking about the Pharisees right ye are they which justify yourselves before men so he's telling the Pharisees right you justify yourselves before men meaning they're showing themselves to be righteous men right you justify yourselves before men Right? You're showing yourself to be righteous in the sight of men. Right? But the most I know with your heart, the most I know your mind. <coughs> Excuse me. But the most I know with your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. Now, the Pharisees, they were the men who teach our people. The laws, right? Just like Gamaliel was our Paul's teacher. Gamaliel taught Paul, right? So now a student will always have his teacher in high regard, right? The student will always have his teacher in high regard. So when it says, for that which is highly esteemed among men, right? The student, right, have his teacher in high regard, meaning he's given honor. When you look up the word esteem, meaning it's given honor. So a student will give his teacher high honors, right? He will exalt his teacher, all right? So it says, for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. So even though the teacher might be highly esteemed among his student, in the Lord's eyes, in Yahweh's eyes, he's an abomination. Right? He's just like the raven. He's just a vessel to be used to feed the servants of Yahweh. You see that? He's just a vessel to be used to feed the servants of Yahweh. That's why it goes back to Galatians 6 and 3. Don't think yourself above that which you are. Don't do it. You understand? Read it again. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. Go back to Galatians 6 and 3. Right? For if any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You see that? Any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You see? So at the end of the day, even though you're a teacher, even though 
you're uh, doing sit downs, even though you're prophesying, even though you're edifying the people by whatever talent you have, right? Don't get high minded, right? Don't get high minded. Don't think yourself to be more than what you really are. We're just vessels being used. Be humble. Exercise humility. All right? Exercise that humility. Right? And I'm going to end with this scripture right here. Ecclesiasticus 37. Ecclesiasticus 37 and 19. It says, There is one that is wise and teacheth many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. You see that? There's one who is wise, and he teach many. Right? He got a lot of students. He teach many. But to himself, he's unprofitable. You understand? And that sums it up. You see that? That sums it up. It's just like the raven. Right? The raven was used to feed Yahweh's servant, Elijah. He brought food to Elijah. Well, guess what? This word is food. Right? This word is food. Right? And we bring out this word to our people. Right? When you bring out the word to the people, you're feeding them. Right? But you could be that unclean vessel the Lord is using. And after he's done, he'll get rid of you. You understand? Because you did your job. Your job was to feed them. You understand? So with that, don't be high-minded. Alright? Exercise humility. And I hope you brothers and sisters were edified. Be encouraged, continue in the faith with good works. Shalom. Give thanks and praises to the most high. Give thanks and praises so high.